Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about a new game engine. We've covered well over 100 game engines in a playlist available here on the channel, and this one is called Mini GDX. This is technically a framework, if we're going to split hairs about that, and the LibGDX is probably immediately coming to mind, and I think this definitely was an inspiration for this one, but this is not a Java language, it is a Kotlin language. Now Kotlin and Java do have quite a bit in common, in that the Kotlin programming language targets the JVM, but it also can create uh, JavaScript output or native binaries. Uh, so you kind of got to start with Kotlin to understand this new mini GDX language. And Kotlin is a programming language made by JetBrains, the makers of the IntelliJ IDE that will have another appearance in this video, actually. It is the easiest way to do Kotlin development. The biggest thing you may know uh, JetBrains for is they ultimately made Android Studio from Google. So uh, it is the Kotlin language. It's one of the major strengths of it is it is designed to make it so that you can write server side and client side code kind of seamlessly, but also kind of works the same way for uh, mobile versus uh, desktop and so on. It's sort of like write your code once, run it anywhere. That That's a very... Uh, often aspired towards goal. But what I like about it is it's a nice, clean looking, modern, concise and safe programming language. I do like the look of Kotlin code. And again, you can share code pretty easily between various different platforms. Uh, you can also, again, target a number of different runtimes, and it's being used in a number of different places. As I mentioned earlier on, there is the IntelliJ IDEA IDE. IntelliJ is a Java uh, development language, but of course, since these guys are making the Kotlin programming language and they make this IDE, the integration between the two is quite nice. So what you're going to find in this particular example, uh, I am actually going to be using IntelliJ IDE. Uh, you can download this for pretty much whatever platform you want, and if you've never used JetBrains IDEs in the past. They are an absolute joy to work with, so do check them out. All right, so we're looking today at Mini GDX. As I mentioned earlier on, this is a game framework uh, using uh, Kotlin multi-platform. Uh, if you are interested, uh, it is MIT open source license, which is definitely a nice thing. Uh, you can target JVM. So that means anywhere there is a Java virtual machine, you can run your code. On top of that, you can also target JavaScript and Android. Uh, iOS and native will be coming at some point in the future. There is a template to get you up and started. That is the code we are going to look at in just a second. And there is a showcase site with a number of examples. So the template is available here. Uh, the cool thing is if you log in, there's actually an additional button here uh, for uh, this, use this template button. Uh, by the way, if you're not logged in, you will never find that use this template button. So if you're a little confused there, uh, that's what's going on. But I've cloned this repository down. I'll go back to this page for a second. And here it is in action. All I did was did a GitHub clone, open this up in um, the IntelliJ IDE, and it knows how to use Gradle, which is the underlying build system, and does all the magic for you. The key thing here is how you run your example. And you use Gradlu and then run JVM. To set that up in the IntelliJ IDE, what you do is go to run, and the first time it'll say, would you like to create a new configuration? I've already created the configuration. You go down here, you pick the Gradle project, which is the mini GDX game template. And then for tasks, what you want to do is run. And then you can either do run JVM or run JavaScript. I actually discovered I do not have Java installed for the first time in ages. And I also don't want to install it. So we're going to use JVM as the example. Uh, that is all you need to do to run it. You can see it's actually doing a build here in the past. I think I already ran it though. So let's go ahead. We'll run it again from scratch. So this is building JavaScript. It's going to run in my browser. And this is the out of the box example. It's pretty straightforward. You see here a texture map cube spinning in the 3D world. Now the cool thing about this is this is actually an imported Blender scene. So we're gonna head on over here and take a look at how this is done. Now, if you're not used to the Java world or Kotlin world, you're going to find that they are very directory structured space. So if you've got a namespace in your code, your directory structure mirrored it. So if it's like com.mygame.your your dot something each one of those is a directory so you got to do a lot of drilling down here to find what you're interested in but the big point here is locate the source folder right there and common main and then Kotlin your game my game so this here is the application this is the hello world or the entry point of your uh, mini GDX app um, you just scroll in so you can see the code this is typical Kotlin um, it, it's 
it's pretty similar. Like if you've used uh, C Sharp or JavaScript, you're gonna be immediately comfortable with it. One thing you're gonna notice right here though, is it's actually getting that scene as a cube.proto buffer. And this is a, both a cool thing and a real crap thing here. See here, asset sources, we've got dot .blend files. Oh, those blend files went together to create this proto buffer. Uh, the downside here, so what that does is basically is you're importing a scene from Blender that you can then go through all of the nodes of that scene and create them. Now this is overkill in that there's just the one model there, but if you had a complex scene hierarchy, uh, this here would actually loop through all of the things that were found in that scene file. Now the downside here is there is literally zero documentation on how you turn from this into this. So that is unfortunately a missing point here. This, this engine or framework definitely needs improved documentation. And truth of the matter is, you're probably only going to use something like this if you are like knee deep in Kotlin in the first place, if you're interested in Kotlin and you are looking for a framework. So you're gonna have to dig into source code to figure out how things work. And we'll look at that in just a second. But here is a pretty straightforward example. Uh, this is loading in a 3D file, looping through all the entities that are there and adding them into the world. Uh, the, the engine itself is pretty um, entity based. So I'm gonna show you now some of the examples that are out there. So I'm gonna go back and find them. So here we've got the, uh, the mini showcase, uh, the GDX showcase site, uh, which is available right here. Here you can see some of the things that mini GDX is capable of. So we've got a simple 2D platformer. And the nice thing again is Kotlin can target JavaScript. So we're actually running this in a browser, easy build target. Um, so. 2D style games can be created like so. Uh, and then I'll go back. And then we've also got a 3D example. This is a 3D style platformer made out of cubes and so on. Uh, I, I forget the game, this tower something or other. There's a game that this looks just like, but as you can see, you, see, uh, you can use mini GDX to do both 2D and 3D work uh, like so. And then there's a couple other examples here too. So one for interpolating the position between two cameras. So if I press the space, we're gonna blend between the, the different cameras using interpolation. Again, you can see the source code involved in doing these things available down below there. Uh, collision resolution here. So we're gonna, we're gonna bump into something. Bump, bump, bump. Oh okay, yeah, that, that's not what I was expecting to see to be honest. Hmm, not sure what the point of this demo is, uh, but it's available there. And then finally, there is one on uh, an animated 3D model taken from uh, Mixamo. And you can see, so you do 3D character animation as well. And this is the heart of your documentation, basically. So not the template, the template is, so you can start there, start by cloning the uh, template we just showcased and you can create your game from it. All right, I did not mean to leave my page, just a second. Oh okay, yeah, definitely screwed that one up. But anyways, what you wanna do is you head on over to the mini GDX repository. Everything that I'm talking about here is in the linked article down below. So uh, you can get the directions there. Uh, mini GDX itself, this is the source code for the entire project. The game template. So if you wanna do basically your own version, this will do all the uh, resolutions for you. So it will automatically download the dependencies and such that you need. Again, the easiest way to work with this one is install IntelliJ, log into GitHub and do the whole use this template thing. And then uh, finally, the other one that you're going to be interested in here is this mini GDX showcase. And to dig into this one, come on in here. You're gonna drop into the source folder, common main, and then you're gonna go here to this blah, 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 blah. So again, the Java and Kotlin and these languages are very directory heavy. So you wanna to go to source, common, main, Kotlin, com, GitHub, mini GTX showcase. And here are those uh, examples we just looked at. So there is the uh, interesting spelling. This is the 2D version. And I believe that's because a Java name can start and cannot start with a number, ditto for Kotlin, which makes you result in some weird things. There is Tweety, uh, the 3D example. So if you wanna come in and check out the source code for one of these things, this is sort of your starting point. So you can see, get an idea of how games are structured. You're also going to notice everything here is systems and entities. So yes, that whole classic entity component system is all back. Nice thing here is it should make your code nice and uh, parallelizable, all of the typical advantages of uh, ECS based approach. Otherwise you're doing things pretty traditionally. You're, you're going to overlighting in the system. You're going to override the update function that is going to call every pass through or every frame. And there's a pretty consistent approach that way. You also see here player system is handled via a state management system. Um, and yeah, 
So there's literally no documentation for this game engine. So where you're really going to want to start is here. So in the showcases, come on in here, take a look, go to the showcase folder, and you're going to find physics examples, cameras examples, the, the dance, the 3D model example. Now the downside is, once again, I didn't find any documentation on how you create these proto buffs. And that is pretty key. Those proto buffs are created from blend files. I just don't know the process because there is no documentation out there. But you can see, once again, they do it. They're, they're looping through the scene. So they load up this uh, proto buff, which was created from a blend file. And you basically just loop through all of the entities that are found. So here you can see it uh, checking if it's a light or if it's armature, it's adding it into the scene. Um, Pretty straightforward approach, but unfortunately, if you're going to try and figure out the Mini GDX uh, way of doing things, you're going to do so by jumping into source code. So if you've got no pat, if you've got no previous experience with Kotlin, or you're not comfortable in going into source code, this this framework is definitely not for you. Now, in in time, if it gains more documentation, because this is literally brand new, if it gains more documentation and, and becomes a little bit more user friendly, it might be a better choice for more people. But right now, this one is for the Kotlin purist. So. So uh, there's the result of the default template. Uh, again, I do highly recommend checking out IntelliJ IDE if you want to work with it. And just going to head on over to the GitHub repository or to minigdx.github.io uh, and go from there. So some of the key features of this engine are split down here. So you got 2D and 3D rendering, skeletal animation, keyboard, mouse, and touch inputs, sound playback via MP3, uh, access align bounding blocks collisions, SAT collisions, and scripting capabilities in there. And there's some instructions on how to build it. But again, if you open this one up in IntelliJ IDE, it pretty much recognizes that it's a Kotlin project using Gradle. And all you have to do is set up that run configuration. So basically just come on in here, run, run it for the first time. It's gonna ask you to create a configuration, name it whatever you want, pick the Gradle project, pick run either JVM if you've got Java installed, the JDK installed. Otherwise run JavaScript and you are good to go. And then just basically run, uh, click the little, run icon up here or press F5 or shift F, sorry, shift F10. I thought you used F5, but I guess not. Uh, and it will build and run your, your example. And you basically just start adding your own code in there. Uh, but sadly, once again, there is very, very, no, usually there's no documentation at all. So this is not going to be for everyone, but if you are interested in Kotlin, this does seem to be a pretty full feature 2D slash 3D framework uh, using an ECS approach. So let me know what you think of this one. Comments down below what you think of Kotlin in general, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.